Welcome back to Off the Field with me, Anish Kwanim. We are live here on episode 3 of Marks for Sport or Sport for Mark. Just before this segment got over, we had Vasant who came in and gave his view on how sports and the corporate world and the internship world work and the co-relationship between that and how trends are changing. With me on the show here, I have people very dear to me. And when I say dear, I really, really mean it. They're very dear to me. I have Miss Sheikh and of course Sufyan with me on the show who are role model mother and child. You all remind me so much of my mom and, and, and my relationship but you know just looking at how you all two are together just gives so much of inspiration to not just me but so many people who are now going to be watching the show. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us on the sets. Thank you. Tell us Sufyan, tell us your journey. My journey towards sports began since I was, uh, since my childhood. Hmm. My, uh, my journey began with playing cricket with my dad. Hmm. Uh, sports taught me hmm discipline, hmm. teamwork and time management right. and always wanting something better all the time. So you are saying that sports actually helped you to become a better person? Yes, in many ways. Hmm. Uh, according to me, the best one was teamwork. Okay. It has helped me a lot. Hmm. Basically, I am a very shy person and don't okay. open up easily with everyone. Okay. But since ever the opportunities I got to play for my school, right. it has helped me a lot to like make more friends. Sufyan, you're saying you were a shy person? Yeah. You seem to be so confident on the show right now. Ma'am, do you agree? Do you agree that sports has actually changed his life? Yes, I really do agree because I think it's a big pillar uh, which made my son grow into a patient and a humble human being. Okay. He always had those values in him but it just had to be portrayed in a better way. Hmm. Ever since he came back from Hyderabad after playing his matches, I found drastic changes in him. Okay. For example, he always kept his shoes clean. Okay. Uh, he always see, saw to it that no matter however tired he is and mm. however muddy his shoes are, he always kept it clean. Okay. He started saying, thank you mom for all the hard work that you do for the whole day. We can see him grinning in the <laughs> corner. <laughs> and I really think this came in because he had he really put in that hard work for himself for those okay. matches over there. Okay. So, so you're saying the learnings from what he did at this tournament which he went for started translating into his everyday life. Yes, 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 obviously very right and uh, I think this has been inculcated by his coaches. Okay, so, that so it's something which he learned from somebody, It's it then became a viral effect yes, and then correct. he started practicing that even at home. Right, right, very right. Sufyan, do you agree? Yeah. yeah, do you agree? Do you think that there's been some learnings from sport which you want to talk about? Yeah, it helped me in my teamwork like I okay. made more friends in school. Okay. And time management has also helped me in my studies. Hmm. Time management has helped you in your studies. Yeah. Okay. You think it's helped him in his studies? You think being a part of a sports team has affected I think his education studies, positively? Yeah, I think the education and sports has a very uh, you know, uh, great connection between the two because hmm. I think a clever and a sharp mind will always help you to give better ideas on field right? and sports make you feel better about your body hmm. and that a healthy body will always help a healthy mind, hmm. give you a healthy mind. Right. So I think uh, there is a very strong connection between the two. I would also like to add to this Anish is our youngsters who are committing suicide nowadays hmm. just because they fail in one subject. Right. So sports is something which will teach them how to overcome their failures in life. Right. So, I think sports should be a compulsory subject in school, teaching them really good values since childhood. Right. Where they can learn many things as teamwork and uh, you know that coming up with your failures in life, you always have a second chance to give. Right. All those things are very important. So, Fian, to back what mom has just said, you know, she talks about failure. She talks about, you know, people fail in life and they yeah. feel that they might not be able to bounce back. There must have been incidents when you were playing matches that you've lost a game or you were trailing in a match. What was your mindset considering you were going to lose the match, you lost the match? Uh, when my team was lacking back, like we would lose the match and our captain would uh, would encourage us and you also outside the field. Hmm. So it has helped us. And helped you in what way? It helped you to show that there is always a second chance? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Always a second chance in our life as long as we are alive. Right. So you believe that, you know, being a part of sport has taught you that it's okay to fail? Yeah. Is that what you're trying to convey, that it's it's fine to make a mistake? It's okay, it's absolutely right. I, I always tell him there's a second chance. You cannot win all the matches all the time, hmm. right? So there is always a second chance for you as long as you are alive. Hmm. So that is an opportunity which is given to you every time. Hmm. What is the correlation between this and studies? Uh, do you believe that the rankers, the ones who are only studying, hmm. maybe can learn something from sport 
you know based on what you just said i know maybe it is obvious to learn many things from sports because uh, nowadays i think our uh, syllabus is only stuck to studies and mm. those matters which is not even helping you in your future life mm. so i think those things uh, should be focused more on sports i think right so maybe i say the education or a good sound educational background can also make you a better sportsman similarly being a good sportsman can also make you good in your very education very right very true right. anish i absolutely agree to mm. it because uh, sports and studies together will make you a much better person i think right right uh, you know we spoke to a lot of people in the segments which were before you all and you know they had a similar view on how you know people who are only studying you know sports could add value to their life or people who are only playing sports education can add value to their life as a mum Mm-hmm. as a mom i'm sure there is always talk around with people mm-hmm. you know my child needs to study my child needs to do well my child needs to get educated yes he does need to get educated and then what what is your this message is so to much of the moms if you could if actually. you could speak to the moms on the show right now who've tuned in on the dads on the show who are watching the show and give them your message on why they must balance the two i think they must balance the two because not only sports or not only studies i think let them do whatever they want to do let them leave them free and you know they can always do much better in their lives with whatever they have their plans and sports is really really helpful because i have been experiencing these things and i know it is really it really works a lot along with your studies you can cope up with it and it's not that difficult sufian a message to your friends watching the show mm, yeah i think sports helps us to uh, overcome our failures in life uh, after a tough practice and a great match still if we lose the match uh, we i know i have another chance to win it back again this same goes with the uh, difficulties in life like uh, we always have another chance to win it back again So friends just live your life to the fullest and enjoy with whatever you do. I think exams are also like matches which we can win with a little hard work and dedication. I'm just staring at you. Yeah. I'm just I'm just watching that intelligence come out of you Sufia and you you are such an inspiration to me. Thank you for saying what you just said and I'm sure the people of Goa are so benef- are going to be so benefited by what they are. Ma'am, you also come both of you all come from a family that owns a sports academy what has that meant to both of you i must say anish that's a big blessing which is given to me by god and noman the hero of our sheik family has always guided and helped sufian in all the best possible ways is noman a uh, 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 related to you yeah, someone who owns the academy yeah he's my nephew okay right. okay so and uh, let me not uh, forget there's a strong strong pillar behind the sheik family who mm-hmm. has always given us all an opportunity to prove ourselves hmm. is an encouraging enthusiastic energetic handsome and loving caring coach like you anish i don't even know whom she's talking about <laughs> oh, I, i got please. lost some of them no no i and i would also like to thank you anish on behalf of all the mothers whom you have taken care of with so much of love and god bless you no that means <laughs> a lot to us so Seriously. what do we learn from this that you can learn from anywhere you can learn from your books you can learn from the field and even if you're a part of sport trust me everybody is watching you i thought i was coaching sufian but i didn't know the mom was also having an opinion about how i coach <laughs> sufian so i'm glad i've lived up to that expectation Thanks, it's so nice to have you on the show and sufian i can also tell you that mom went and met your principal and she only had very good things to say about you thank you for joining us on the show thank you. Welcome back to Off the Field. This is episode 3 where we're talking about marks for sport or sports for marks. Just before we ke- come into this segment, you saw that we were speaking to this mother and a son and understanding their core relationship between how a family can work together to make both work, education and of course sport. Very few times in the studio have we had a superhero who has walked in. And when I say a superhero, I'm talking about someone who's achieved in business. someone who's achieved in life someone who's achieved in his family someone who's achieved in sport and someone who's achieved even in society and most importantly someone who's also been an indirect yet direct mentor to my life it's an honor to have you in the studio with us uh, suraj bhai uh, to give you all a very quick introduction about this this wonderful man he's also running a very successful company he's the managing director of the kakulo group 
they own multiple things under that flagship. They have car dealerships. Um, they have even Westside under them. He's also the co-owner of the Gakulo Mall, which most of you have been to. And more importantly, he also runs a very successful sports academy, which is a martial arts academy called Dojo de Goa. A lot of history of how we built up towards this successful yet very, very inspiring journey. We're going to hear it from him directly. Tell us, Suraj Bhai, how do you manage to run such a successful business and, of course, such a successful sports academy? Well, uh, karate comes to me as a passion. That's sort of, since childhood I've been practicing karate. Okay. So karate is not something I plan for. That's mm. something I sleep, I live, I breathe, yeah. and that's how it comes to me. Mm. Uh, business is like an, any other profession. That's mm. how, and most of our businesses are uh, professionally managed. Mm. So, and with the internet age today, you are updated with happenings as and how they uh, move on. Mm. But with karate, yes, I do take that extra time, effort and energy and which is always a pleasure. Do you believe that spending time with sport and spending time with your passion, which is karate, has it assisted your business life in a certain way? In a major way, I would say, because that uh, uh, right from the early age, it's the discipline, you know, karate is something I've been learning personally from a very young age. Mm. So it's the discipline after all, which uh, one inculcates or the habit by which you sort of set a discipline in your life. Mm. So you carry that to your office in your normal routine mm. or for that matter, even uh, personal life, mm. you know, personal space, wherever you have time. Mm. So yes, definitely I see a lot of discipline. First of all, you learn to respect time. Mm. You learn to respect people when you meet and your personality development helps uh, to, to, to a great extent. So you're saying it makes you a better human being, which Absolutely. goes a long way in Absolutely. life and business. And, and, and have people actually seen that? And, and they asked you. I have seen uh, self-confidence. I mean, I'll, I'll give you my own example. As a, as a school student, I was a very shy student, mm -hmm. you know, and never could go out and interact with too, my, too many people per se. Mm -hmm. But as I developed karate, I learned how to uh, channelize mm -hmm. my, my strengths. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, very easy for young children to be uh, uh, misguided or, you know, moving into the wrong direction, mm -hmm. if not, you know, the channelized properly. Yeah. So here I s experienced myself and I see it with a lot of students wherein they have completely changed the way their, their attitude is in life. You know? Interesting. You know, uh, I believe you started karate at the age of 17 or rather at the age of 17 is when you got your black belt. That's right. Yes, which That's means right. you started way before that and yeah, that took yeah. you up there. There must have been a lot of support from your own home. Oh yes, I have to thank my mother. She was the one who was always looking out for channelizing my energy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in, in the uh, 80s, when I was practicing karate, when I started practicing karate, karate was meant for only elders. Mm. It was not the children who would learn karate that time. So I was among the younger ones. Mm. You would always have people who are 25 plus or 30 and plus practicing karate, so so to say adults. Mm. So I was, that's how I was, I mean today if at the age of 17, it's, mm. it's quite mm. late for a getting a black belt. Today you see youngsters getting a black belt. Right, right. So from there you've moved up, you're, I believe you're the joint secretary even of the national federations that's right. in the country. That's right. It's been such an inspiring journey and um, how, how has your, your family even now been supportive in this journey? Oh, very much so. They they are completely supportive. In fact, uh, both my sons are also practicing karate. Mm. So they are very much as sportsmen. And for me, they are one of the 2,300 players of karate in Goa, which we have. So that's the pool of uh, strength we have been able to build up for over four years now. In the last four years that we have developed karate in Goa. But uh, uh, along with that, my wife, of course, she's always been supportive in anything I do in life. Hmm. So you're saying in four years, you'll develop such a big pool. Yeah. What, what was the success behind getting these athletes to come out and play a sport? In, uh, in, in a society like ours, where people are like, you got to study and you got to study. Yes, yes. Uh, I'll tell you, there is, karate is not new. Karate is, uh, goes uh, many years back and it's got its history of its own. But the mindset, the way it was being taught mm. was different. Mm. And today, karate is Olympic sport. Mm. So unlike the 80s or the 90s when we would practice karate, we were be, uh, practicing for being street ready. Mm. Today, it's a sport like any other sport. There are points being scored and there is protective gears being mm. won so because people are, uh, students are being prepared for Olympics. Mm. So the, the message and the information about karate had mm. to be uh, passed on properly. Right. So. Uh, being a businessman, being an administrator, yeah. the first thing I needed to do in place is 
make the respective, we have a wealth of good instructors in Goa. Okay. So I had to only uh, make them think differently, hmm. think differently in ensuring that we have a spread across. Okay. I remember meeting Mr. Prabhudesai from Sports Authority of Goa and he, he asked was just me, on the show. He oh, was just really? On the yeah. show. So he asked me the first question, Suraj, uh, how many players do you think are practicing in karate in Goa? And I had no clue. So that's when the thought process started. We okay. need this, uh, you know, cumulating of the data first to know what is the strength we are talking about and we were amazed. That's awesome. You know, you were talking about your own sons who I believe are answering uh, important examinations. As a father, right, as a father, I'm sure you've seen this really often around the state of Goa and of course the state of India. As soon as they get burdened with education oh. or they know they got to complete their curriculum, yes. there's like a back, there's like a back, you know, you just take a step back in sports and you don't know whether you should study, you should play sport, but how do you balance this with your own children? Well, that's a, that's a difficult uh, phase of life one experiences, I would say, probably in India yep. because of the way we have curriculum, yep. like the first, uh, it would be the 10th standard, then the 12th standard, wherein they, those uh, respective exams, uh, you know, make your career or break it. Yep. That's what it is. Yep. And unfortunately, as of today, my sons are in 12th and 10th. Oh gosh, so here we go. <laughs> so you're the right person on the show apart from being a superhero. But yes, karate for them is, I mean, today, any child, when they get a free time, they would probably go out and play some game. For my for my children, I've seen they for them karate is also a sport they enjoy just about re to rejuvenate. Yes. They look forward to just going there, meeting friends, doing a little bit of uh, uh, karate practice. That's not a commitment which is boring for them. That's mm -hmm. something which is exciting. It's a part of life. That's amazing. And I think what they have learned all these years will even allow them to shape how their education transforms Absolutely. in the years that follow. Absolutely. You know, moving into a question which I had for you. You know, before you came onto the show, we had uh, Mr. Vasan, and Vasan is the internships manager at Choglis. And what he spoke about was how important it is for even the corporate culture to have a blend of athletes or that, or that concept of, you know, being fit at the workplace. Do you focus a bit on that? Oh, yes, we do have seminars, not something we plan uh, well in advance because the culture is different. I mean, you know, in, in uh, we have close to 700 uh, plus employees in our organization. And uh, yes, today I have seen there is more uh, consciousness hmm. to, to being fit. Yes. So, uh, yes, it will be very interesting to have, uh, but we do have some self-defense courses for mm -hmm. ladies and things like that. Okay. But we definitely do not have as of now some set regimes for fitness in the office to offer. Okay. But I'm sure I'll be uh, looking forward to that. You're a five-down black belt? That's right. That's, That's possibly right. the reason for a lot of discipline within your ranks. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, so if you had to give a message out to, to corporates, to people in the industries, to people in businesses watching the show, and you want to sh you want to share a message of fitness as as someone who's an icon, not just for the, for the sports fraternity, but even for the business fraternity, how important is it, do you believe, that they balance what they know from their school books what they learn from their workplace and the mind and the body. Oh, sport is very, very important. I mean, I would uh, suggest to each and every uh, person in Goa or otherwise watching this uh, show, uh, it changes your lifestyle. It changes the way you think. It changes the way you get up afresh in the morning. S work or other commitments will stay with you. But health and the way you think, your mind, you need to develop with the fitness, with anything and everything to do with sport. It could be karate, it could be badminton, it could be any sport for that matter. But I can't imagine a single day at this age also wherein I wouldn't want to sweat before I sleep. So that's a culture where we have to build up. That's something in work, uh, in our office also we have this, wherein we have uh, cricket matches, football matches. So please get this into your life and I would suggest Everybody inculcate the habit of some sport or the other in your life. Thank you. What we just heard right now was the perfect balance between a corporate life, a business life. He's an amazing family man. You know, in fact, I want to highlight an incident. I met you recently at a restaurant and I came over to the table to talk to you and you stood up and spoke to me. And that's very, very rare that people nowadays actually have that respect. And I believe in the game of karate, you all start with a bow. Absolutely. and you'll end with a bow, Absolutely. right? So Absolutely. it develops personalities, it develops human beings, as you just mentioned earlier. Uh, Mr. Suraj Kakalo, it's been an absolute honor to have you on the show. Thank you for My bringing friend. so much of light. And I hope all of you who are watching the show are largely inspired by this incredible personality who's made it from 
all the way up, stayed up there, taking it to another level up and beyond. And we'll see you back in the studio for the next segment, which is The Prudent View. And The Prudent View is going to talk to you about the psychology and the real angle as to why we went behind this episode of Sports for Marks or Marks for Sports. Stay right there. We'll be back. Welcome back to the last segment of Off the Field with me, Anish Gwenim. This is The Prudent View, where we talk about the making of the show, the reasoning behind it, and the psychology behind the thought of sports for marks or marks for sports. With us, as usual, we have Ms. Amita Gwenim and, of course, Mr. Neeraj Prabhu. Thank you again for joining us on this segment. Yeah. Uh, Neeraj, sir, to start with you, we've seen all the speakers give their view. We've gone off the studio and even heard a lot of people talk about the relationship between sports and marks. What is your take on the topic? Well, I uh, definitely believe that, uh, you know, uh, we look for players who are out there, who mm. have intelligence, yeah. who are team players mm. and who are uh, capable of uh, reasoning out and uh, expanding their horizon mm. to create uh, some brilliant moves on the field. Mm. Let me first uh, give you a relevance on the field of the values that we are looking for mm. in players and in students. Mm. So, uh, we also want uh, our children, our youngsters to, you know, be a good student. Mm. And to be a good student, you have to be a good learner. Mm. You can learn first on the field because mm. children start playing before they go to school. Mm. From uh, a very young age, uh, we see children enjoying themselves with their friends, mm. enjoying themselves with their parents mm. when they play at home. So, the joy from sports is unbounded. Right. That is what, you know, uh, attracts the kids to sports first. Mm. And when they start to go to school, mm. obviously, uh, they are involved in learning uh, the academics uh, and all that uh, comes with the classroom training. Mm. So, what... I am looking forward is to see uh, kids enjoy themselves on the field, on the ground, as well as in the school. So a good student will definitely enjoy both these uh, areas, uh, whether it's playing on the field and uh, whether it's learning in the classroom or at home. Hmm. So I think both these uh, fields are mutually beneficial. Right. You know, you mentioned the word enjoyment. I also yes. remember when we started off our, our career in sports, the first thing that our coaches wanted to achieve was to enjoy. And even as you mentioned, you know, when kids join school, they join the primary, the nurseries, and they keep rising up in the grades. It all begins from enjoyment, yes. liking what's around you, getting accustomed to relationships, and then moving on. Is there a psychological angle to sports for marks or marks for sport? Yes, Anish. In fact, one of the things which I liked what Neeraj said is, you know, children are exposed to play. Mm. So, fr the very beginning of life, mm. you start developing skills through games, right? right? And then it goes into sports mm. as they grow up. Now, the most important thing is sports achieves three main development of skills. That's intellectual, social and physical. Mm. Now, this carries forward mm. into their classroom. So. It is, ext it is true that if you are a good sportsman or if you play sports, you will definitely perform better with academics. Mm. And the reason for that is what you learn when you're playing sports is time management, mm. being focused, mm. you know, your grasping capacity, mm. as well as the way you comprehend things. Mm. So a student who would normally take five hours in a classroom, mm. A student who is playing sports mm. may perhaps take an hour to do the whole thing. Mm. So they can manage life better. Mm. They do perform better in academics. And this has been proved. Mm. There's research done on this. Mm. And it has been proved that students who participate in sports perform better in academics. Why is this not reaching out? Why is it that they are yet under so much of pressure? You know, they're yet under so much of pressure that it's only studies. We see that there's a trend, you know, you study till a certain grade and then you reach a deciding year and everything stops and then it may not resume again. And by the time they reach grad school or they've reached post-grad school in our country, they're just not playing sport. It's perhaps the awareness, okay. you know, it's like the awareness which is not yet reached out even to parents and society. Can you reach this awareness out on camera to the people watching the show? Well, exactly what we said now is that sports does help you to develop these three main skills intellectual, physical and social. And these have to be trained from a young age. I really feel that parents and other people watching this program 
need to encourage sports if you really want your children to learn to deal better with day-to-day -day life and be successful tomorrow. Right. Uh, coming back to the last angle of the show, Neeraj sir, we hope, wish and look forward to our country receiving as many honours at the top in sport. Yes, they receive honours in education. They, we want them to receive honours in sports, maybe whether it's a rise in the tally of medals for the Olympics or the Asian Games or the Commonwealth Games. Do you think that educated individuals, the rankers, if they channelize that mindset into playing sport, it could help our tally? Well, uh, definitely. Before coming to that answer, let me also add to one of the studies that has taken place. Uh, there, there has been one uh, German study which says that uh, people uh, learn education, uh, learn vocabulary words 20% uh, faster after having a rigorous round of an exercise, which can be anything, you know. They learn faster after playing a game. So, mm. definitely sports adds to uh, scientifically uh, the learning process, adds to the learning process. Mm. Now, coming to your question, mm. definitely uh, the intelligence and the team spirit which mm. is required uh, is uh, aided or benefited by going through school and through systematic education. Mm. So, definitely uh, those those uh, athletes, those sports persons mm. have a lot more scope to, you know, get uh, fine-tuned mm. or get uh, sharper mm. as we go forward. Yeah. So, definitely they can be better medal prospects mm. than the uneducated kids uh, mm. or uneducated uh, people going up and uh, taking mm. sports. So, mm. yes. We hope you've enjoyed the show. We would also like to say that there are many stories of sports success which have not come from the right or the sound educational backgrounds and we are not disrespecting their stories. We know that Every story has to be respected. Some of them come up from a good angle of education. Some of them are not fortunate enough to have the right amount of education. But they yet have the will to succeed. And by being channelized on the sports field, they just take it to the next level. But what we are all trying to say is, if you are studying right now, or if you are playing sports right now, link the two. You're going to see a big change. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. And we thank you both again for being thank a part you. of the show. And we will see you next for episode four. We finished three episodes. That's yes. right. We finished three episodes. Right. It's, it's so nice to be a Amazing. part of you all, right? So <laughs> we're looking forward to episode four. And episode four is something which, again, is a very dear topic to many. It's about setbacks and injuries. You know, in life, we go on a path and we know that this is where we want to go. This is where we want to reach. But at times, it's not always in our hand. Is an injury actually a setback? Or is it a setup for a comeback? We'll see you next on episode four. Remember, if you would like to be on the show with us or talk about your story, if it's related to the next topic, write to us on the links provided below and we will be happy to focus on your story and feature you on the show. Thank you for being with us on Off the Field. My name is Anish Gwenem. We'll see you soon.